Welcome to the McCall walkthrough video. Please begin with the getting started with McCall video to set up your account. My name is Mariah Lewis and I am working at the New York Botanical Garden with the Expanding Access Project, funded by the IMLS National Leadership Grant. This will be a walkthrough of the McCall process. The McCall user guide will provide more information on the specific details or problems that might arise when you start using McCall. If you have any questions about McCall relating to the Expanding Access Project, please feel free to email mlewis at nybg.org. Please note that this video is created for the Expanding Access to Biodiversity Literature Grant Project. While the walkthrough may be helpful for those outside the project, certain aspects of this video are geared to those who are working on the project. This video will focus on using Macaw in the cloud. There's a version of Macaw that you can download, but it requires that you do the installation and updates yourself rather than the updates being automatically applied. You can use Macaw in the cloud from anywhere as long as you have internet connection. Now let's click on this link and get started. This will take you to a login screen and then, once logged in, to the Macaw dashboard. This is the login screen. We will go ahead and put in our assigned username and password. In this case, we're going to use the demo account. This is the Macaw dashboard where you can find helpful statistics and information. In the upper right hand corner, you have a couple of different things. You have your username. Here you have options for password change, full name change, email change, and it also shows you your permission and the default contributor. Next we have logout, which is self-explanatory. The help button will send you to the Macaw user guide, which, as I have mentioned, is a great resource that is always being updated. And this box allows you to search for an item that is being worked on, if you have recorded the item ID. Moving on to the next ribbon, you have a couple of different options to explore. The In Progress header leads you to a page where you can see what is currently being worked on. This gives you the barcode, title, author, contributor, size, and status in a handy table. You can also modify what shows up with a drop down menu on the right hand side based on the status of the item. You can click on the barcode to view any of the items, but more on that later. The next title on the header is Create New. Your options are to manually add the item or create from CSV. Next to this is Current Item, which allows you to navigate to the item you last worked on. Now that you know what the different options are in Macaw, let's do an upload. We start at Create New. In most cases, you are going to be using manually add item. So let's click on that. This brings up the add item screen. At this point in the process, you are adding just the title level metadata. The identifier is something that is guaranteed to be unique. Most institutions use the barcode of the item they are adding. So I'm going to put in a fake barcode for now. You cannot change this in McCall once you hit save. Everything else on the sheet can be changed after you hit save. Then you have two checkboxes. The first denotes that you will be sending the item for QA, or quality assurance, before it is sent to the Internet Archive. Please always check this if you are part of the Expanding Access to Biodiversity Literature project. The second box asks if your images will be JP2s that do not need to be converted. Only check this if your images are in the JPEG 2000 format. Text direction is next. In most cases, the default will be the right choice. Copyright depends on the item you are uploading. For more information on the different options, please refer to BHL's copyright page. In most cases, you'll be selecting public domain. Creative Commons does not change, so do not worry about it and move on to the next field. 
Scanning Institution is a drop-down menu. You use this in situations where your institution is not scanning your own materials. For example, if you are sending your materials to Harvard to be scanned. Next is Rights Holder, which is also a drop-down menu. This is used in the case of the items that have gotten permission agreements signed in order to include them in BHL. The names on the drop-down menu are added in the BHL administrative dashboard, which is separate from a call. This is where you will upload your MARC XML file. Click the document with the plus sign on the right-hand side and select your file from your computer. The first collection added will be biodiversity. Please be sure to always add this or the item will not get into IA. The year should also always be filled in. You can either fill in the title field or leave it blank and it should be pulled from the mark record. The sponsor is who is paying for the scanning. In the case of expanding access, it is required that you put the following. IMLS space LG-70-15-2020 The volume information is very important if it is not a monograph. Please check out our standards for volume information as this is what is visible in the user interface. Now you see a blank field. You can add as many extra fields as you need by clicking Add New Row. What we want to do for the Expanding Access project is add two extra fields. First, we will add another collection field and type in BHL Expanding Access. Second, we will add a contributor field and put in the name of your institution. It is very important that you add this just as you want it to be seen in BHL. In order for this to be properly articulated once the item gets to BHL, the contributor name must match what has been created in the BHL administrative dashboard. I will work with you to make sure that this is done properly before you start your Macaw uploads. Then we hit save. This brings us to the page where you can upload and import page image files. You can either drag and drop or click the add files button. In this instance we're going to drag and drop. Then click start upload. This will start the upload and import process which you can keep track of in the status bar at the top of the page. The page will continuously refresh as more pages are uploaded. Thumbnails will start to appear as they are imported. You cannot navigate away from this page while it uploads. You should not use Macaw in a different window tab or browser. The import process can take a while depending on the size of your files. You can cancel the upload at any time by clicking the corresponding button. Once the upload and import are complete, a green button will appear that says Enter Page Metadata. Clicking on this button will take you to view all of the pages that have been uploaded and imported. After waiting for all of the pages to be uploaded, the green Enter Page Metadata button will appear. Now you get to add all of the page metadata. If you look at the bottom of the page, you can see there are options that now appear to be shaded. Once you select a page or more, you will be able to enter information. Under Select, 
you can manipulate which pages are selected if you do not want to select them one by one. If you would like to manually select certain pages, you can click the pages while holding the control button. To choose multiple pages in between two pages, hold the shift key. You can zoom in and out of the pages. Then on the far right, you can switch between thumbnail view and list view. Going down to the page metadata section, you will see where you will be putting your data for each page. First is the page prefix and number. To enter information, click on the box with the pencil, which will bring up a window. You have a variety of options. Please call the pages what they call themselves in terms of prefix and numbering. In some cases, the numbering changes from Roman numerals to integers, and you need to document that. The prefix is usually only changed if the item has plates of images that are marked in the book. You have a number of different ways to count the pages. The implied page number box is a way to use page numbers for navigation even if the page numbers are not present. This is particularly helpful when the first page is unnumbered, but followed by page 2. In that case, it would be an implied page 1. In order to completely remove all page prefix and number information, click this little box with the red symbol. This can be used for any of the different fields. The next field is page type. This is where you give very important information about what is on each page. You have a number of options so pick what best matches what is on the page. It is possible and sometimes necessary to add more than one option to each page. Click the green plus sign to add them one by one. Please be sure to add the four digit year in the next field. If there is volume information, please add it in volume. This field should only be a number, no words. If you have something that is issue 1 rather than volume 1 issue 1, please leave out issue and just put the integer in this field. If you have something like volume 1 issue 1, the next field is for you. The piece information is where you will give the next level of enumeration. Click the plus sign to choose the piece name, number, issue, or part, and then the number value. You must hit the enter button for it to go through. The final field is page side. This helps the page turner work once it gets into IA and BHL. Ordinarily, the first page will be right or recto. The Macaw Notes field will not go anywhere outside of Macaw, so please only use it to make notes in Macaw. Then you have your Save and Review Complete buttons. Be sure to save frequently because Macaw will log you out and you will lose unsaved changes. In order to send it to QA, which hopefully you click the QA button as mentioned previously, you click Review Complete. For now, let's hit save so we can test out navigating back to the title you are working on. Let's go back to In Progress to view the title we were just working on. As you can see, it says In Progress under Status. You can get back to your item a couple of different ways. You can click on the barcode which takes you back to the Edit Metadata page. 
You can also go to Current Item to navigate between different aspects of the item. You can click Edit Item to update title and item level metadata. I recommend checking this before sending it through. You can also completely delete the item if you need to do that. You can also upload pages and import pages, important in case you missed a page. Then there's the Edit Page Metadata button. You can only complete the process of sending an item through McCall by going to the Edit Page Metadata page and hitting View Complete. A couple of other things McCall allows you to do is delete or move pages. If you click and drag to move the pages, they will remain there. You can right click to delete a page. This is helpful if pages are somehow out of order or if a page is added twice. When you actually start adding page data, you will really get the hang of the best way to use the select options and control and shift keys. Going page by page can be done, but it will take more time than selecting all the pages with photographs or illustrations and adding all the data at once. The same thing goes for page numbering. You can select where the page numbers start and end and everything in between and add the page numbers for all of it. In most cases, you can add year, volume, and piece all at once for most publications. For page side, I recommend selecting alternate, then marking them as left or verso, if that is what the pages are, and then inverse to get the opposite pages, in this case recto. Let's go ahead and add the metadata for this item. First we start with page prefix and number. It starts with Roman numerals. However, the first page is an implied page number. We're going to hit the pencil box, change the numbering to lower case Roman numerals, and start counting at five. We're going to click the implied page number box and then hit replace. From sequence 12 to sequence 16, we're going to go ahead and put in the rest of the Roman numerals. We're going to hit sequence 12, click shift, and then click on sequence 16. We go back to the pencil box, leave page, change the numbering to lowercase Roman numerals, and start the counting at 6. Then we hit replace. Next we have some plates. These are a bit different. We're going to click on sequence 17, hit control, and hit 19 and 21. Back to the pencil box, we're going to change the prefix since these are plates and not pages. We're going to change the numbering because these are uppercase Roman numerals. And we're going to leave the rest the same and hit replace. Now if we double check, we'll see plate three and plate three. Next we're going to go to the regular numbered pages. This is another instance where the first page is unnumbered. Now from sequence 24 to sequence 40, we're going to hit shift, select all of them, and start the counting at two. You can double check the page numbers to make sure you are correct and there are no missing pages. Remember to save frequently. Next, we are going to add the page type. I like to go in order, but it is really up to you how you do this. First, we're going to start with the covers. Sequence 1, Control, Sequence 46. We're going to hit the green plus arrow, find cover, and voila! Next we have a book plate, and there is an option for book plates, so let's go ahead and add that. 
blank pages, we're going to click sequence 3, hit shift and sequence 6, add a blank, and there's a few more down here, so let's go ahead and get those. Next we have a title page. Then we go hit the illustrations, same way before, using the control button. And there you go. Save again, just in case. Let's double check. Oh look, there's a table. Let's add that as well. We're also going to need to go through and make sure we select all of the pages with text. If you do not do this, an error will pop up that a page type has not been assigned. A page type must be assigned in order to send the item through Macaw. For year, volume, and piece, we can go to select all. The year is 1887 and the volume is 1 and the piece we click the plus button, select number, put in 1 and hit enter. Since we conveniently have all of the pages selected, you can click alternate for left verso and then inverse for right recto. So let's assume that we are done, so we hit review complete. And here's that error I mentioned. This is awesome because it'll let you know what pages are missing data. Couple of blank pages to add in. Try again. There you have it. As you can see, changes have been saved and the item was sent for QA review. Until the item has been reviewed by Quality Assurance, the in progress indicator will stay in the status column. If you realize you have forgotten something, you can go back and click the barcode and it'll bring you right back to the item. All you have to do is hit review complete after you've made the changes. If you are not having your items QA'd, please do this for expanding access. Then you have until three hours before your item is sent to the Internet Archive. Once your item is in the Internet Archive, it is impossible to change the images, so please be careful when you are working with your items. If you are not having your items QA'd, the system is a little bit different for pulling the item back to edit it before it is sent to the Internet Archive. Let's go to Edit Item. We're going to uncheck the QA box. Save. I'm going to go to Edit Page Metadata. Send it through again. Here we go. As you can see, the message is a bit different. Now it says completed under status. In order to pull it back in this case, you can still hit the barcode, but then it brings you to this page. Go ahead and close out of this box and go to edit page metadata. This will completely stop the item from being ingested into the Internet Archive until you hit review complete again. That wraps up our walkthrough of Macaw. Until your item is reviewed by the Quality Assurance team, the status will remain in progress. You can go back at any time by hitting the barcode to make edits before it is reviewed. If you are not using QA, which is highly recommended for those with the Expanding Access project. It will be a little bit of a different process. 
we're going to go ahead and uncheck the Needs QA box and hit Save. And go back to Edit Page Metadata and send it through. As you can see, the message is a bit different. And it says Completed under Status. You have three hours before your item is taken to the Internet Archive and there is no way you can make changes to the images as soon as it gets there. To pull the item back, to do some updates, go ahead and hit the barcode and you get this message. Go ahead and close out of this. Go to Current Item, Edit Page Metadata, and the item is pulled back and ready to do more edits. Remember, once your item is in the Internet Archive, it is impossible to change the images, so please be careful when you are working with your items. That wraps up our walkthrough of Macaw. Here are a few tips that I have found helpful when using Macaw. Save frequently. Include the volume and year information in the title field so you can easily refer to it when you are updating page metadata. Make sure there are no AND symbols in the title of the item or the files you are uploading. Double check your autofill settings frequently. Do you have tips for McCall users? Tweet Mariah and BHL at, at MSL09C and at BioDiv Library. This is a table of the different types of pages you can choose from. It is also available in the McCall User Guide. Did you lose or forget your password? Email Mariah Lewis for expanding access password help or Bianca Crowley or Joel Richard for non-expanding access password help. For technical problems or error messages, please put in a BHL feedback ticket with the subject technical issues and begin the body of the message with Macaw. For procedural or policy questions, first try the BHL Documentation Center. This is especially important for information on enumeration and chronology.